trying though like they're definitely trying like it's unfair to Ten say that because remaining. the other team played really well and, and it's not because oh the eg didn't try it's just because Five they got remaining. outmaneuvered and outplayed on the yeah, but they're not going all out right i mean like rtc has like seven pops in his last eight days on dota jumbo tracker like he's not like they're not like spamming the games that you would if you're trying to win a tournament they're not pulling an ILTW. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, ILTW, he wants to win. Like, that's some burning fire passion. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody's pulling an ILTW. How does he play so much Dota? I don't even know. He just does not stop Ten playing. Seconds. He doesn't need sleep or something. I mean, that's the only solution. <laughs> and it's paying off. Really? Like, the team is crushing it at the moment. So, uh, you know, and EG, we're going to see what they can do in game number two. We are uh, ready for the draft for game two between them and PSG LTD. We got EG on the -E dire side. Uh, this time around, and PSG LTD Radiant side. And um, here we got a couple of bans in already. Mag and DP ban on the side of EG. We got the Nyx Assassin left in the pool because PSG LGD banned out Timber and Enchantress. Other than Nyx Assassin and Ancient Apparition, any other heroes we should be looking Ten out for? Remaining. Mars. Mars, yes, absolutely. I think the Mars Lion opener has Five actually been the most remaining. successful one this entire tournament. Unless I'm wrong. No, no, it, I mean, I don't have the stats for it, but it looks super strong. Yeah, I have stats on Mars. Players. He wins a lot, but when you pair him with Lion, he especially wins a lot too. Yeah, he's the most picked hero this major, 32 games, 63% win rate. And that's like generally with Mars Ten being in the first phase. Remaining. Like there's a very big difference between a cheese hero having like yeah. a 63% win rate and a hero remaining. in the first two having that. Yeah. Because you're literally supposed to be against five heroes you're bad against and you're still beating them all. That's actually pretty impressive, but... I think good Mars PSG. games don't PSG. really need It's not about who he's playing against, but it's about what his team is playing. He just, so. His toolkit uh. is so like robust and easy to play with, right? Mm -hmm. And he's very flexible in where he can play and how he can play, but what I mean is you can enable your Mars through your picks, and it doesn't really matter what he's playing against. Yeah, I agree. So if you if you pair him up with like these AAs or these snaps or these Phoenixes, like you give him a good Mars game even if it wasn't before. Five so I think that's why he's so popular as a first. Third yeah, he, he also just... He's like a strong laner. He gets teamfight, he gets stun. So it's basically what you're saying. Like, everything he gives is something you want in every draft regardless. So that's why it's easy to pick, right? Can't really go wrong he's, with it. He's also playable mid, yeah. which I don't think has been done that much this tournament, but he's actually quite good from that position. Also, his arena is not that high of a cooldown, which is something you really want out of your offlaner. Mm -hmm. To give you team fights to be tanky, but not to be a high cooldown hero like Tidehunter. That's why I'm not Tidehunter's biggest fan. I just feel like Ravage is way too high cooldown. Yeah, like, I also don't like Ravage. Even when Arena, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you're a legendary Tidehunter, so you don't have to worry. <laughs> but um, even when Arena is on cooldown, Mars is still remaining. a pretty useful hero. He can wave clear very easily, and he can set up for kills with Blink Five Spear. So you're not dependent on Arena at all. And Mars AA, I feel like, -G is in every team's wheel right now, Jesus so EG keeping the draft very light. And um, on PSG LTD side, we got an axe. If one for another, there could be carry axe. Yeah, they, they, they played in both roles this yes. game. Yes. I wouldn't be surprised if they busted out mid just to... <laughs> just to make sure that they do all the bases, all the cores? I mean, this Ten team, apparently, they're like remaining. a meme team. Like, Faith on doing sprays everywhere. They're just doing it for the boys. I have a question. Five seconds uh, meta. Big brain question. Okay. Okay. The goal is winning TI. PSG Very simple, LG right? Yes. Turn turn so back. when you know that you're playing for winning TI, how much emphasis with these two teams? They are well. EG obviously is guaranteed TI. PSG LGD most likely going TI. How much emphasis are you going to put in creating heroes that teams will have to ban against you, so that come Ten TI you remaining. always have two bans that people will have to ban against you so that you can remaining. pick whatever you want other than those two heroes. Like how many mind games are going into that or is that too far-fetched? I mean, the idea's not like out of this world. But? But usually that's like Broodmother, Io, yeah. Techies, like the real- The heroes are. that other people don't play. Yeah, like it has to be something that differentiates you because honestly, like, if they pick Axe on three rolls, I'm like, okay, they pick Axe It on could three be the Omni Knight. Hmm. Um, yeah, but Omni Knight's not like a... Like, if you pick a cheese hero, it has to be like, I drafted it, what up now? Mm -hmm. And like, 
teams are scared of dealing it. With that said, like, LGD actually does play techies, so I would have been... <laughs> like, if they wanted to do that, Jinkyo is, like, one of the best techies in the world. But, um... Because I'm thinking about your thing now. It, it, is, it is something. Like, specialization is important in Dota. But, yeah, I, I, I don't know how to answer it, to be honest. <laughs> Maybe too far fetched. It was very meta. It was a bit too meta. It's interesting to think about for sure because teams are still first spanning IO against Nick. Yeah. Whereas they're extending their first bands versus other teams on here is like Nyx Assassin or Mars or Ancient Apparition. So when you're playing against Nigma, you've always got that IO first phase and that frees up a hero. That's pretty nice. Yeah. I mean, that's that's that opens seconds, up the draft a lot for for the team as well is this the first game with nyx like unpicked and unbanned seconds, um, must be one of the few, very few games it's yes. pretty good for eg here uh yeah it, it's good versus phoenix because you start sunray and it should be good versus lena also good versus axe yeah it should be i think because you know he, spike carapace into yeah, the exactly. counter helix yeah. also eg loves the spirit heroes yeah. which uh, nyx tends to counter yeah so. That removes that threat already from the draft. They ignore it. All right, so in terms of bans, we've got a couple cores on the set of PSG LGD with the Terror Blade, the Ursa, and the Storm. TA, Clock, and Elder Titan removed by EG. And the Lina this time, of course, on the Ten side of PSG LGD remaining. could still go multiple roles as well. Five seconds remaining. I yeah, I can for see sure. this. I can see this as a four Lina or a mid Lina, but mm -hmm. I would like to see a mid Lina because nothing to say is Lina is insane. Yeah, I think. If you see two range supports, I think putting your Lina mid is really good. Mm. Generally, the range supports aren't going to be able to gank her. And in a pure 1v1, Evil I geniuses. don't Turn actually think there are any matchups that Lina loses. That's a really good point, actually. And AA and Snapfire are not heroes that gank mid very easily in yeah. the first place. Like, they, they do suffer rotating. They're, so they're kind of follow-up heroes. I'm actually so shocked that Nyx got all the way Ten to the, what, what should I call it, the fourth pick? Fourth pick Am I supposed to say out these fourth pick? Yes. So many Five words, seconds. I don't like I know, I know. I like it. It's not efficient at all. Yeah. Is this 19? This is 19. No, this is... 19? <laughs> Nick's assassin. This would be 17. 17. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it's hard okay, to I, I okay, so for PSG's fourth pick, they got Nick's assassin. <laughs> this is um, after the first... Go ahead, Chief. Yeah, well, I was going to say Nick's assassin has been picked 16 times because he's been banned so many times. 69% uh, win rate. Nice. Um... Yeah, yeah, and this is what the Nyx has. I think in every single one of those picks, it was first two. It's a 69% win rate while being first two, which means your other heroes are also as a counter Nyx. Maybe they weren't so concerned about the Nyx because they aren't going to play this into core. Mid. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think they sort of wanted to bait this hero because they had to know that LGD was going to pick it. For and sure. you can see like DK, okay, we have to deal with Lina and Nyx. DK is actually here that's good versus both of them. Five I'm not actually 100% sure about how the lane works. I know before, like before the water runes came, sometimes Lina could spam out even a DK from lane if you went um, 2 0 1. Or uh, I remember Bra would sometimes try to go like 0 2 1, and that was like the you win this lane so hard or you're useless. But I think nothing to say will play like a, some stable 2 0 1 and he'll out farm the DK anyways. Also, something to note is that. Snapfire does not like to play versus Nyx Assassin. It's not the worst thing in the world for her, but the, they're going to be heavily dependent on the Mortimer's Kisses and the Mars Arena for damage. Ten and Nyx can just remaining. press Carapus, and that's not yeah, that's bad. Yeah, that's a good point. That's Five really enough of that. So remaining. maybe they weren't really thinking about the Nyx Assassin. I mean, flew under the to radar? be honest, I, I think Snapfire, like, when he first came out, the Mortimer's Kisses were most of the hero higher damage yeah, yeah they're higher damage so you pick snapfire for that ot and you're correct in that nyx does PSG counter a lot of snapfire's LGD's toolkit to however to i do feel like this hero is strong enough that even though you play against this nyx he's still a strong hero i agree but i do think she's the main source of damage in arena at they the have a blast <laughs> I, I think they should be able to burst off to say i mean because the thing is, like, you can cancel remaining. the Snap RT, but you'll still get three hits off, right? If you're throwing at range. So, like, a couple hits of Snap RT with the AOT, I think any hero should die. But you won't get, like, this insane OT against the uh, LGD lineup because of Nyx. That's true for sure. I think our team fight gets skimped a little just by the lack of Mortimer's Kisses. Oh. Wraith King. So, is there, like, some counterplay you want EG to do to that? 
Like maybe they, that means they have to find the next first because they do have the tools for that. I think they can just play Snapfire for the rest of her kit, you know, like okay. for her shard or her ads or whatever. She does not have to be played for her ulti. I just think that she was a big part of their team fight being so scary, yeah, okay. and now she isn't so much anymore. But it's like you said, she does have a very useful toolkit. Mm. She does, even if she didn't have ultimate this game, she would still be a good team fighter though, just because of the Phoenix, right? Mm. Just because you, you'll be able to use Absolutely. her. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I don't know any skill names. Your third spell to kill the Phoenix egg. <laughs> Little Shredder. Thank you. Oh, Little okay. Shredder. Uh, I can't so I do have a comment on Wraith King. I actually don't like this hero so much when he comes out versus low cooldown heroes like mm -hmm. Axe and Lena and Nyx. I think his biggest strength is when he would ta he tanks a Chrono or he tanks a Doom or he tanks a Ravage. And there's not really any big cooldown that he's playing for. He's just no. going to be played on the merit of... Yeah, that's true for sure. I think his ultimate is lower value. Kit. However, like when you think of AA as a hero, I think he also enjoys having a, yeah, a hero with a stun. That's a carry axe. Dark Seer. Okay. That's an Ami a axe again. A carry axe with a vacuum. That's actually terrifying if you hit that combo because it's so much pure damage coming out. When we saw it in the previous series, though, on the lane, it kind of fell flat. Well, Did they have enough to catch up this time around? He got 3v2'd in that game. Yes. And then. I think like as a hero, Axe should be really strong in the, as a safe thing. Like Battle Hunger is one of the best spells for helping your support on the side. But I mean, I don't know. Nothing to say has been a beast on Lina. So even if his lane does go badly, I think he does. I don't like the Wraith King. I just want to say it from now. I understand picking it to lane well with AA, but last game they won their lane really hard. Uh, Fapion was a solo Omni Knight, but they couldn't. They didn't really turn it into anything really. So. Yeah, and I'm just I think you're right, that like, I'm not LGD have a lot of sustained damage, right? Like the Iron Shell, the Venus Wells have low cooldown. Even if you're, you're saying basically like you tank the stuff, but then they have more once you revive. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> you don't have like the normal <laughs> effect of raking. I think that's, that sounds right. And do you remember how I was All talking right. about how Batrider like split a kill like Nyx Assassin? Mid lane is very similar to that because she does rush the VOTs and Nyx Assassin loves to set up on side lanes. So I can see them just out maneuvering them through the map this whole game. So you don't really believe in EG game two? I'm not a believer. I could be wrong, but I don't like it so much. Actually, I, I mean, I think I like EG's draft more than last game. Okay. And because I'm from NA, I'm going to say EG's going to win this one for the right. boys. Yeah. But um, I think a lot of the weaknesses in EG's draft that FE you mentioned or like you mentioned it they're like i'm a bit scared you know too many holes at the same time like it is like an axe lena core like i don't know if it's because i haven't seen enough of this but the Prepare cores on battle. lgd are experimental and they are a team that has like yeah. gone too far at times. that's fair that's fair they are a bit experimental but i i believe in them okay well it's game two uh, as said earlier eg has a lot to prove uh, with this game yeah, in terms of getting that point so that they still have a chance of making it to the upper bracket of the playoffs. We're going to find out if they can take a game off of PSG LGD or if PSG LGD will continue to be on top of finding out together with Cap and Kyle. Yes, let's find out together, shall we? AUI, of course, bias towards evil nah, geniuses like you. always, Kyle. Yeah, like most of his fans. Uh, <laughs> gotta have copium. Yeah. You watch EG play too many LAN events and... Uh, I'm just hoping Arteezy doesn't find himself stuck on a cliff today. Yeah, that was a pretty rough go around that uh, he had last time around. That uh, nothing to say. He's got his number. Let's jump into the game, shall we? Because I know the teams are itching to be able to have a little bit of action as uh, they're moving around, smoking about, trying to make some plays happen. Mm -hmm. So the uh, LGD versus Evil Geniuses game two Thanks, kicking guys. off Thanks here. And um, look at that. We're all in the river just as the bounty runes are about to spawn. <laughs> nice skewers. <laughs> XD. King of the, the hill. <laughs> I like that from Vape Beyond. All right, bounty runes spawning. Looks like we are just going to have a 2-2 two -two split here. Nothing major. I will say I'm happy that Dota is a game where people feel comfortable to all chat. Um, I think that voice lines and all chat voice lines specifically add a lot to the game. And... Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of what, what's, I don't know, you ever, you ever watch a basketball game close enough to hear, you know, there, people are talking, they, they, sports aren't silent, neither yeah. should esports. Yeah, absolutely, if only the next step, we could actually get a little bit of their comms. <laughs> I know teams will never accept that, but the rare times we get to do get to hear some of that, I think it's very special. 
and it's fun to be able to learn about the teams. Mid matchup, nothing to say versus Abed. Lena versus Dragonite. We've got Nyx Assassin no. and Darkseer up there in the top lane. Matched up into the Wraith King, which I think is a Dyer's hero you can actually kind of pressure. Um, especially since he has an Ancient Apparition, who I don't view as the best laning hero in the world. Mars, Snapfire, bottom lane against a uh, Phoenix and a Carry Axe. What's your take on Carry Axe, Kyle? I honestly, I'm not sure. I haven't seen it enough to have a, a firm opinion one way or another. I, I think it's solid. I think especially when you pair it with a Darkseer, it's kind of terrifying, to be quite honest. Yep. I think the lean is going to be more important just because that's your only real source of tower damage. So I think nothing to say he's got to pop off because otherwise, if he's just like running around with the Yules too late into this game, top I don't actually know. They, they don't have any real right click threat. Jin Q, they're being very aggressive, sir, and they're gonna kick the crap out of you. You get a little bit too far forward, does he link salve up, so he'll be okay. And the battle hunger spam. Oh, this is a pretty tough lane for Ice Ice Ice. Just getting constantly spirit yeah. hunger spammed. At the same time, Axe doesn't have a whole lot of good uh, starting armor, and you already had the Blightstone, I believe, pick up from Crit. That's true. Yeah, a little Shredder on top of that, and he actually can't really tank hits very well. Uh, so, the, yeah, this is definitely a, a battle where I feel like both cores are going to feel a little eh, not the happiest, let's say. Yeah. -uh. And Abed off to a great start middle as well. This is a somewhat skill-based matchup, but realistically, DK should win it. You have the Quelling Blade advantage. It's actually tough to last hit Islina because you get that attack speed up from the fervor, but when you tank the Dragon Breath, your last hit damage is significantly reduced, and DK almost always can out-hit you. And of course, DK now with the free runes will still get a bottle early. Typically, in the past, you might play without it, just double bracer. Oh man, looks like he got very low. This is what we're talking about. Both the cores feeling the hate of the opposing support. Both of them taking a lot of harassment here. Oh, they will miss out on a bit of CS as a result of that. Bottom lane, or top lane rather, Fate Beyond, they go for it, and they manage to get the first blood just barely. Killing Fly before Fate Beyond ends up falling, and Jin Q, ooh, nice use of the Spike Carapace, he's gonna get stunned up here, and Arteezy not actually backing down, reading the fact the Iron Shell was coming up. Ice 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 gets burned out bottom lane as they manage to get the kill finally onto Ame. I don't think he'll mind too much. He got his gold spent before he died, and he kind of needed to heal anyway. He was out of regen. He was too low for a ring of health to play too much of a role in his lane strength. So top, that was a bit surprising, but it's really tough for Fly to play this lane if he tanks a stun with Nyan Shell nearby. It, when it gets pushed up near the tower, that's when the Darkseer starts to thrive. Radiant structures yeah, and I think um, Darkseer, uh, he had this revitalized laning phase when Vacuum started being uh, an ability you could actually level in lane. And so now you paired up with these Lina's, Nyx Assassin's Clockworks, and this Vacuum feels so much better as they're going to be able to... There it is. Yep. It's just the extra little bit you need to be able to get these kills. Yep. And this is very dangerous now. All of a sudden, they're just diving Arteezy. Yep, Arteezy is very likely dead here. Let's top see if he can juke it out attack. somehow. He does have nine magic wand charges, so maybe he's actually good. It's a whiffed impale goes out. He jukes to the left, but the ion shell on the face beyond actually did manage to get a tick onto RTZ. He kind of showed him the way and ends up finding carry of the evil geniuses. That's so dead. They kill Phoenix down bottom, but this is getting dangerous up top. The trouble with AA in this spot is that you have no method of getting back into the lane. Yep. You, you can't go push a wave. You can't really gank anywhere, so you're just now a, a stack bot. You know, he'll probably Dyer's look to do that soon, but the thing is, EG don't really have anything that can clear stacks too well either. Watch that one again, yeah. Nice cookie into spear combo. And uh, I guess we'll watch RTZ die again in a way. RTZ is gonna die again, Wait, was by the way. That is not uh, a replay, that's just a bit of deja vu, so he's gonna have to do the walk of shame. And remember, they, yeah, we were saying they, they picked Wraith King not necessarily because of the game, but for the laning phase. And if you're getting bodied in the laning phase, yep. suddenly things uh, things look Radiant's grim. Honestly, I think you should be looking at this uh, and keeping this combo in mind whenever these teams early pick Ancient Apparition. Yeah. Right? Because it's supposed to be Ancient Apparition is paired with the Wraith King, Sven, Troll. Yeah. Like those three heroes to make um, the Cold Feet Thanks, work. Guys. 
and they're just showing out of body yet. And three, I mean, EG won the lanes last game, still got wrecked. Right now, PSG LGD arguably ahead in all of the mob ed. Slight CS lead, but I'm once again worried for EG's damage output. And yeah, Fly is just getting solo killed by an Iron Shell and an Nyx Assassin. Arteezy's in the jungle. Yeah, he's done with the lane. I don't blame him. I don't think he can Radiant's do that anymore. Is under attack. Ooh, man, LGD, they're off to a running start here. They're going to need uh, Crit and Ice 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 to do a lot of work. Once again, Ame abandoning the lane relatively early because that's what Axe can do. A little bit different than, say, the Wraith King, uh, who you don't really want to abandon lane this no. early. You want to get those higher level of skeletons before you do that. Great, going for the kill here on to Y. The spear isn't oh. quite enough. Didn't latch. Didn't latch to anything. Maybe they could have gone for another right click before Radiant's throwing out the spear, but they thought they attack. had it. Top lane Dyer's tower, top dead top by top seven minutes. Yeah, and noticeably, Faith Beyond, I've seen a lot of soul rings Dyer's on the dark here. He went for bottle in Dark Hanes. I actually like that decision. It's part of why they were Dyer, able to pressure so scan. hard. Uh, he got the fresh bottle, and then they just spammed ions, dove with the wave. They've killed a tower, and what, four or five enemy heroes in less than seven minutes. This is insane for PSG LGD, and they're now denying Arteezy's jungle. Ame tries to come out of the jungle, defend this tower, and it's a good idea, too. Even with Abed here, Vanguard. they are, yeah, kind of running out of damage because of the Vanguard. The rest of the TP is coming in from LGD. Shin Q still looking to catch up to Ice Ice Ice. Drops a sentry for a little bit of vision. Actually managed to get a spike hair face back on the spear. And then the Dragon Slave finished them off. And LSA stopped Trouble. Dragonite's uh, damage. They do manage to get the cookie. Now oh, kill Shin Q. Yeah, the, the jump, that was actually just perfect for Mame. He goes to the woods when he might be a little susceptible to getting killed by that exact rotation mm -hmm. and comes back with a Vanguard. So Raindrop, Wand, Vanguard, he straight up has no fear because once Radiant's again, EG's damage output is very attack. limited at the moment. It's 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 concerning, you know. I don't think EG is playing poorly by any means, but PSGLG they are on one today. Have looked excellent thus far. Seven to four. Does feel like the landing phase is a bit of a disaster for EG. LGD is up by just a thousand net worth. That's a lot for the laning phase, but it hasn't spiraled too yeah. far to control, I guess. And this is the concern is I'm watching a Wraith King jungle a Midas. I've seen this in, uh, in a matchmaking, but typically you don't see it as Double often damage. in the international Dota 2 tournaments. Um, a, did he go, does he, did he skip one in the series before? Yeah, he went uh, Vanguard into Manta, yeah. into the Shard. Next Assassin setting up. They're gonna see if they can kill RTZ and take away the reincarnation. I'm wondering if they feel like they can go for him twice here. Shin Q is certainly setting up for it, but then the Ancient Apparition shows himself. That's Radiant's fine. Reincarnation level one is a huge attack. cooldown. Oh yeah, and they get the Wraith King Illusion too, so that'll be Ion Shell that'll steal some camps. Really just trying to slow down the farm. Radiant's bottom yeah. tower. Good idea all around. Yeah, great stuff. LGD looks great. Attack. Yeah, and Darks here in a game like this just feels so cool, fun. Uh, you have your top tower dead. You've got tons of space. You're gonna just stack, grab runes when necessary. But you, you have a partner. Dyer's like LGD, they have all three killed. things you love when you're a dark seer. Multiple stuns that you can back into, a support that you play within the laning phase, and then assist to, to find kills later on, and then also a core you can ion shell, surge, and play around. So everything that you need, plus a great start to the game. Looks like he's getting the hood first. We'll probably make a pipe at some point. Very effective. We mentioned already how the magical damage of EG's support is going to be key for them to win. But if you can negate the entire Ice Blast and Nyx Assassin can interrupt the cookies, suddenly those heroes just fall off. And once again, EG, lower damage output, all three strength cores, mostly reliant on stun CC combos to find kills. And unfortunately, all three are behind their enemy counterparts in terms of net worth. Yeah, all of a sudden, 3,000 net worth lead for LGD. Now, this <laughs> feels like, I was, I was wondering, I was like, how is it only 1K? Yeah, this this seems a little bit more yeah. realistic as uh, PSG LGD are moving on out with the Nyx Assassin. It was just looking for anybody. It was deceptive because the PSG LGD had stacks. Oh, 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 oh ice, ice, ice. What? I don't know what that spear was, but he's dead now. Yeah, EG, they've been in just farming jungle this whole time, but PSLG, like, they had an ancient stack, they had a couple stacks that Ame cleared, so 
suddenly they're feeling fine. And yeah, this is this is how you want to play it. Look at the warding. They just kind of suddenly shift themselves upriver and now take enemy ancients and save theirs for later. Because if you can deny these camps, it's a real natural extension then to take mid tower as they just did. Nothing to say picking that up. So for the uh, the copium of the fans. Yes. LGD or excuse me, uh, evil geniuses should at least have better late game, right? Mm. Lena Axe Darkseer cores. Uh, I man, this new Axe shard is yeah serious business. <laughs> I don't. I I think uh, I think it won't be the last time we see this. It is not a meme. This is a real thing. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. I don't know how well it scales. Like if we get to 50 minutes, sure. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it isn't scaling damage. Mm -hmm. So we'll be best around that 20 to 30 minute mark. Radiant's bottom tower is under yeah, attack. Yeah, he's rushing pipe. I, I love this move from Faith Beyond. You've got plenty of mana just with bottle and arcanes. So he's spamming ion almost off cooldown. And this effectively gives his entire team plus 400 health when they take the first team fight and the base 10% magic resist. Give him the iron shell and watch him go. Dyer's top assassin. Top Not gonna go for the Dragonite. That's a hard kill. Scanning. Go for crit instead. That's an easy kill. Or is it so easy? He needs a little bit more of this wand crit. Trying to beat a cookie over the dragon egg, but that's not going to help him out. Now fly. He's going to get caught by Ame, who is waiting on the high ground for him. Gets the call. Gets the kill. Well, this is, again, Dream Darks here. I love that play. You're pushing top. You're taking all of this farm, and then your next assassin just says, hey, Ion, shell me real quick and throw me a surge as I TP. And it sets up for now not one but two kills because the rest of the squad's already there. It's just... Really well done by PSGLGD. You can see uh, JJ drew a little line on the map, just kind of demonstrating the crease they're now pushing EG into. All of a sudden, they take this little lead, and it acquires map control. Yeah, the ward on the Dire Ancients was, was neutered, but mm -hmm. they still have total control of the map. That was cute. Faith Beyond dropped his bottle off because it was an illusion rune for a core Axe. Mm -hmm. Best rune for Axe by far. And easily going to get yep. him uh, an extra 300, 400 gold, and that's going to be 300, 400 gold that Evil Geniuses is also going to get denied from them as it's going to be inside of their own jungle. The Ice Blast coming in. Shin Q does get hit by some of this. Ice 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 is looking to be able to catch him with the arena, and they do. Nice by Carapace. Stall the death, but eventually he will indeed die. It's a lot of spells. AA Blast, Arena, DK form. Meanwhile, an illusion is chasing Arteezy out of his own jungle. This is just uh, the gold advantage still going up for PSG LGD. Like, I have no uh, no personal Radiant's bias here, but it just feels like PSG LGD is nuts. Like I, I have, I'm try trying to think about how could they play this game more efficiently. It feels like they've slowed the pace down a little bit, but they're still out GPMing, and it's to get their next core items online. They've recognized, look, Artesia has a Midas. Mm -hmm. He's not going to be a threat for a lot of time, so we have the opportunity to chill a little bit. Let's make sure our moves are measured probably get the manta and then you'll look to see them just take aggression or just go right now they do have egg pipe is ready Dyer's top tower yeah, honestly is under attack. lgd you can just keep this going no big cooldowns that they're forced to play around besides this supernova lining up on ice 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 he is using the defiance to pretty good effect but eventually he's going to be caught by a stun and then brought down pretty swiftly big beyond dominating for him RTC quick to try and push out the bottom lane as rapidly as possible. He's gonna go for a Radiance, which is kind of an interesting idea. Uh, Arcs here? Uh, okay. I think this, I don't wanna say, EG, I don't wanna say they look lost, but I've seen this at RTZ before. When in doubt, your team's kind of falling apart in terms of their early to mid game execution. So just minus Radiance and hopefully- When in doubt, farm it out, is that what you're saying? Pretty much. Yeah. But you make a good point. You're a pretty easy target for a vac wall. Faith Beyond is pretty damn tanky, so I doubt you're going to pick him off at the start of a fight. Mm -hmm. It's very concerning, but, you know, they're not <laughs> out of Actually going back for Soul Ring. It's the most efficient, you know, drop the Arcanes, pop Soul Ring. Mm. Or backpack. Damage. Man, I wish I had one of those, TI-5. Oh, man. What could have been? Indeed. What could have been? That game is over, anyway. This one, however, is not. But EG, you're gonna have to stabilize. I like how they've done this um, just de-warding mission on their own side of the map. You can see eight sentries currently placed all on their end of the river. Yep. Makes sense. 
you have to clear this bottom triangle to just have any hope of being able to recover. They're still bleeding a little bit in terms of the net worth advantage, but that's just natural when PSG LGD have three cores that all love to shove waves. Well, it's about to get worse. Axe Manta now means that more of that, like that one illusion room that went and took all their neutrals. Now that's going to be happening constantly. That was Ame's entire idea. Every single Manta illusion he popped, I just watch him and they'd run into the enemy jungle and take whatever neutrals were available there. Yep. They have great team fights still waiting. I, have we seen an egg yet? Um. Dyer's bottom no, we tower is under attack. Thanks, JJ. You know, we missed out on uh, Ice 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 yeah, denying I saw that, yeah. Supernova. That was sick. <laughs> That's the typical idea. You know, game, game over, but um, nothing to say isn't the only one who can acquire style points, but, you know. Definitely well done. Uh, uh, what is it? Lena, I guess, did go Yul's first? Yeah, just Yul's into BKB. That's a slight, or was it even a miscue? I think he might have seen a peep there, either a Vortex or an enemy hero. So better safe than sorry. He just BKBs and walks away. Sure, that's fair enough. I mean, that's, awesome. that is one of the things about mid Lena. And I used to talk about this with um, when we were, whenever we would watch a limp play mid Lena. Mm -hmm. It's like you, you can get ahead really easily, but the danger is you could throw away your lead. Oh yeah, you just die all game yeah. if uh, you get jumped on. And EG have engineered a draft that can do that quite effectively, a blast on top of one of the many stuns. Spear into Mortimer's Kisses, the Ice Blast, it's not gonna be enough, they don't have the damage. Now the eight goes off, but Ice 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 is alone here, and he's gonna pull right back into it. The stun goes off, Crit is waiting to try and give him a cookie out of here. In fact, he, he actually doesn't need it. PSG LGD weren't really gunning for a fight there. Yeah, the one downside of the PSGLGD draft, though, they don't really have the best tower push. Mm -hmm. Mentioned that mm -hmm. in the start of the game. It's really just Dyer's Lina that can right-click effectively, so you can see that they're shoving waves. This top tower is exposed, but Dyer's clicking it is real difficult. You know, Axe isn't exactly gonna siege very well. No matter how sure tower you are about the late-game potential of LGD's lineup, it's guaranteed that their Radiant's lineup, if it does compete late-game, it has to have a net worth lead, yes, right? It's definitely. one of those kind of lineups. Lena, great example of that. Darkseer, Radiant's big one down. as well. Abed off to pretty nice start there. Finally gonna be able to clear out this mid tower. Or are they? I'm gonna leave it at a sliver of HP. Radiant's <laughs> middle Abed, tower blink it away. Denied. Ame denying the mid tier one. Hey, innocence? Dyer's top tower He's around here, tower. but man, the last time they tried to go on him, they realized he was pretty taken. They're gonna try for it now. Ice Blast going off. They will not have a snap fire though. They're trying to finish him. Innocence does die, but so does Crit. They're gonna have to TP away here. No stuns, so should be fine. <laughs> Wait, actually, he gets killed by Jin Q because he made a call for the offensive play on the snap fire. So rather than run away, he turns uphill, but of course, yeah. Invis DK. Nothing you can do there, one for one. Blink Dagger now online, so I'm expecting this game to pick up a little bit faster pace for PSG LGD. Yeah, just my fear, if you're an EG oh, fan... You just have to wait for the shard, it's not even Yeah, exactly. Sorry. But everything's on pace, right? Like, yeah. you think about what was the game plan for PSG LGD, they've gotten everything that they wanted. Like, they own top, the Darkseer activated, the, the Nyx Assassins, MQ is owning, and you have this timing where about at 20 minutes exactly, Ame will have the gold for shard and all the items he wants beforehand. Is so, is under this attack. is the draft. They've been able to play it the way they wanted. Now it's a question of, does EG think that they have an answer? Is this Radiance gonna get Arteezy into the game fast Dyer's enough? Bottom tower is under attack. Radiance minus phase boots. Man, it's not very tanky. No, and the concern is, you know, again, PSGLG, they don't have any huge spells with the exception of the egg. A lot of quick disables, so they kill him once, Thanks, maybe guys. with an egg on top, another BKB. Oh, Slightly little bit nothing to say, but you can see he recognizes his fragility. Like, if he gets pop, he will just die. So has to ensure that any blink DK stun would immediately be BKB'd. He is the main target for EG because, yeah. again, he's really their one source of real physical right click damage. Yeah, absolutely. He's the greatest source of, of damage that is most likely to be killing the Wraith King in that first life, and then if they put the Supernova yeah. over the top as he reincarnates, he's 100% dead again. Yep. Now they have two stuns, call, Yules. 
It's just all about finding an EG hero. And EG, they've done a really good job. Again, the vision control. We haven't really seen PSGLG get any vision on the EG side of the map for a while now. So they've stabilized. You know, that gold lead's still firmly in LG's favor, but it's not moving. It's all fine for now. Yep. And Arteezy, because he has the Midas Radiance, He's starting to keep up, you know, no matter Ame or nothing to say, he's going to be able to farm equally. But he has to be cautious, because we mentioned the Darkseer wall can be troubling when you run Radiance. But the Nyx Assassin, you can see him having to toggle it off, because if he ventures into the Nyx invis, and there's just a carapace, he'll be immediately stunned, and it's the easiest kill you'll find. All right, time to do Roshan. Pure damage of the Axe coming into play here with the uh, Manta. Yeah, maybe the Axe does do some pretty significant right click damage. Oh yeah, that's a lot. No, they, this hero we blink on you and then pops Manta afterwards. Seriously, I was astonished so many times at how much damage he could do. Dyer's this is top not top a top joke. Top. This is not a meme. This is real. Oh yeah, I forgot because of the free attack speed too. Yep. That's a lot. Yeah, attack speed. 35 attack speed. 5% proc Dyer's chance. Yeah. That's... That's Radiant very good. Structures. Now just imagine if that was 10% like it used to be. Ooh. He was just always Dyer's spinning. It was terrifying. Was the, the attack, I mean, consider a glove of haste is 450 for 20 attack speed. Mm -hmm. So just for that, shard really only costs what, like 700? Yeah, 700 it's like, something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's like half price for the benefit of the proc chance and then the added ability of spinning on attack. So pretty, Ooh, pretty solid. Yeah, we're gonna see this more often. Thank you. actually blinking the smoke and blinking away. Blink, blink. He breaks the smoke and blinks away. Blinking. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> ice, ice, ice. Also gonna do something similar, almost getting caught by the vacuum. TP away, nobody of EG getting caught. Yeah, I, I you know, I'm, I'm I wanna see LGD like actually get a win here because I'm getting slightly concerned, not majorly, but slightly concerned that EG hasn't been caught in any of these moves yet. And the net worth hasn't spiraled any further. And they've now gone from 7 to 8k in pretty much the last 7 minutes. Oh, nice smoke break. Nice, thank you. Great positioning by him. They got a great ward now as well behind tier 2 bottom. And keep in mind, they still have outpost control. Look at this Dragonite. Doesn't have much mana. They do have the arena, which Shinkyu actually runs into with a spike care face, stunning up for a moment. Now the Spear actually catching a Darkseer illusion. They go the Supernova that gets popped by Crit, though. He reads it perfectly. Oh. We jump in, though. Mitch gets a calling plate. He fused it on the Dragonite. That finishes him off. Crit's going to be up next. He needs a Another swing, though, isn't quite going to be able to get it, it looks like, as Crit looks to slow him down with a solid crest and run away back to the safety of his that tier three. A buyback from the Nyx. Ah, oh, oh, got him again. There it is. Ame blinking back in to hit the cooling blade that finishes off Crit. And Shinkyu is just playing unbelievably. Oh, yeah. He, he breaks the smoke. He tanks the brunt of the damage. Juked a bunch Dyer's of abilities, too, to ensure EG had to blow more cooldowns. They get a really good target switch onto the egg to pick it off. But you can see the Darkseer illusion of the Wraith King was instrumental in finishing the kill on crit so that all I'm able to do is blink forward and execute with the axe. Radiant are scanning. BKB is soon to be completed. Yeah, just firing on all cylinders. Uh, EG once again having some pretty significant damage issues. They need more items. They're DK and Wraith King specifically. Ice went for the hood first, so he's going to drop off. It's just the nature of the hero. Yep. More about the mitigation at the moment. All Stop right, so now they've got control of the uh, dire, dire jungle Oscar. because they've gotten the tier twos. They've taken the outpost. Now they're able to kind of like freely invade the triangle. Evil geniuses are going to find that net worth starting to spiral quite a bit because there's just not too many places they can push out uh, fearlessly anymore. It's LGD. I'd be surprised to see them make another move, honestly. There's not too much to really have to wait on, just the supernova. BKB, now complete for Ame, isn't even hitting that level 18. He's gonna hit level 18 and level 20, which are pretty big spikes for an axe. Um, he's falling so fast, and he has so much more freedom due to the map control, so you can see him just kind of lonesome, walking through the woods, jungling with Manta. EG, they're forced to hold hands. Yep. Yeah, DK split pushing, but everybody else backed up behind Arteezy. They know something's coming. Arteezy does have the BKB with the reincarnation, but Ami needs to find the initiation here, and that's going to be on the Mars. No arena here. Arteezy immediately forced to pop the BKB and teleport. Oh, oh, so much oh. damage. Oh. It's fully bladed up, and watch the spins go. Ooh. Ooh. Ame, Axe. 
They're just gonna walk high ground. Yes, they he are. He out, right? He doesn't have a buyback. Yep, he, he just bought out the BKB. BKB. He just used that BKB. They know about Dyer's it now. Are fortified. Dyer's middle oh my god, is they are just bodying EG. You know, I, on the other stream, Nigma just 2 0 Vici in like 39 minutes, both games total. Yep. PSGLG, it's gonna take a little longer, but looks like they've got EG on the ropes and haven't been challenged, honestly. Yep. Like, this is nuts. It does feel like these two teams are a step ahead of everybody else in both the wild cards and the, uh, well, in this case for LGD, the group stage. And this is uh, what you love to see. Cut the waves. Yep. Don't worry about meeting it necessarily. They're TPing. They're actually going to try and catch him because they know he's a little bit seconds. isolated here. 13 seconds for an agent. Okay, BKB TP out. He knows he's <laughs> in danger. He would have been slowly picked at until the Aegis actually expired. Abed doing his best. Ice, ice, ice impression, dropping the bottle, try and bait a cancel. Did he really? Yeah. Learning from the best. One of his mentors. Going forward, Arteezy. Well, doesn't have reincarnation. It's gonna be pulled back, nothing to say. They don't even need the Laguna Flake from him. Now the Supernova's gonna go up. They may be inside the arena with an Ice Blast, but they cannot force the commitment here. Nothing to say. Pop of the BKB, give it a surge. And doesn't really give a hoot. Yep. Ame? Oh. oh. Oh, he could have caught up to them. Stalled for a second there. Wait for it. Team trying to go for a blind blank call. Trying to get the spear into the tier three. They do manage to do so. Stunning him up. But the wall's going to be laid out. This team fight feels a little awkward. Ame's just going to run right back. Ice, ice, ice. As he's turned into a puddle by Y. Patreon everywhere once perfect walls, great backs, and always there to surge the ally most in need of his support. Again, EG, just no damage, especially with RTZ dead. Dyer's yep. bottom tower yep. Yep. is under yep. attack. It seems like LGD. Would you say, um, so AUI said something interesting. He said he felt like um, LGD changes their draft um, based off of what the opponent is weak against mm -hmm. in some way. It feels like um, they are not one of those Chinese teams who Dyer's keeps strict drafting, yeah. but they, they change and evolve based off of who fallen. they're matched up against. Yeah, in, in this case, it looks like they've addressed EG's tendency to all in on a single core uh -huh. with a very solid dual core lineup that's focused on peaks between 15 and 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Like same exact concept, sure, the heroes have changed, but ultimately it's the same idea, right? Yeah. Get an early lead, get an early Roche, take map control, out farm, mm -hmm. and just have this overwhelming damage advantage and win the game before the huge carry of EG can become the one man wrecking machine. and. In this case, they even dominated the lanes. Last game was a much more troublesome laning phase for them, and it took them a little longer to recover, but here it's just, they're casually, look, look at the map, you know? Think about how it was for the first 10 minutes, pretty much even. Then they moved the crease up a little bit and started taking over EG jungle. Now they're saying, we're gonna ward and keep you in your base. Good luck. Crit in some trouble. Impale is gonna go out now. The rest of Evil Geniuses was smoking over. Crit finally dies, but they missed out of the arena execution. Oh dear. Ice, they're just gonna stall them out. The rest of Evil Geniuses, they've given up all hopes of taking a team fight now. Dear. Once again, trapped inside their base. Uh, I got no words, Cap. It's just, how do you get back Dyer's into it if you're EG? Unsure. Um, you know, we talked about the damage issues. Dyer's I question whether you want both your DK and your Mars to go hood first. Mm -hmm. When you already have these damage Dyer's issues, you can see PSG The defensive items, like, come on. Yeah, Darkseer bought a pipe, but Dyer's he had plenty. He, all he needs is mana to sustain his net worth, right? He's an ion sheller. That, that's his Radiant's job. Top tower is under attack. Solar Crest Rush on the Phoenix, you know, offensive only items for the other two cores. Axe Illusion. Yeah, Cutting a AC. like that. He's now got an AC. They're going to be able to do the next road shot. They do it very quickly again because oh. of Axe. He's now level 20. 389 CS in 29 minutes. Yeah. Everyone else, once you get the Manta Axe, everyone else is allowed to hunt and stay off map constantly yep. because of what Manta illusions do for you. And the best part is you don't have to show. Yep. Exactly. Calling blades and being used on Arteezy for his first life. He's gonna come back in with a BKB. They actually managed to find the lead up. With no BKB activated, they can actually kill it. Down for 80 seconds. The Mortimer Kiss is doing some amount of work, but Arteezy's dead. They're trying to finish off the eight. They get it. Ever so barely, but a three-man stun with the back. Here comboed up. The arena is now gonna be laid into play. Ame's low. Ame's dead, actually. And evil geniuses have
have won this fight. They're going to try and finish up by killing Shinkyu and should be able to, but it looks like Fly is going to die <laughs> to Arteezy's illusion from the Darkseer wall. Right, well, EG, they did what they had to do. They killed Belina. Yep. I counted them out, perhaps a little too soon. I don't think they, they can find the right on thing. though without Arteezy. <laughs> This would be great if like, like they won a team fight and they could go rose shot all of a sudden the game it becomes competitive. Yeah, they're still gonna try. They do have a uh, press little shredder. They have an advantage. You can see them pinging the outpost. Well played. Ice yeah. Ice Ice is gonna go grab it so that Arteezy can TP in just a little bit closer. They have no tier two towers, and also they lost the mid racks, so Thanks, guys. Thanks <laughs> just something about that Fiance like to try to pull him out of the pit. Just to slow him down a little bit. Yeah, they, they can't do it. Just the Phoenix and Darks here alone. When did they lose the mid-wraps? They, they, they went mid earlier. Like, as Roshan was spawning, they, uh, after the pick on Mars, they killed Crit, and then they killed Mars, and then they ran it mid, and just, okay. <laughs> okay, go. I know, with, this, this ass you. is befuddling. I know, I'm just following the illusions around. <laughs> this is the timing, though. They got one fight, now you need another. Reincarnate's back up. They have to follow that same MO. 15 on the reincarnate, but you have to mm -hmm. kill the Lena. You have to kill the Lena pre BKB. That is your fight window here. God, it's so hard because if you're all inning on the Lena like that, it, it's just like a dream opening for Faith Beyond to hit just this gigantic wall vacuum. Maybe there's a call at the top. Like, call oh, and super. Oh, they make the jump in. They manage to find the Phoenix. That's all pretty good. A nice call for Mame interceptions, but it's not enough for Y to be able to get off his ultimate. He does have a bind back though. There goes the crawl. There goes the wall. Hit core, puts one after the other. Now Mame is going to be last one left. But actually, RTZ comes back in his second life, but it's not going to be God, There's so much damage. He just dies in an instant. His second life. It's like his first, it doesn't do a damn thing, and crit. Okay, stop that sun ray if you want, son, but you're dead. Evil geniuses, well, they're mostly dead. They're gonna give up Roshan and maybe even a second lane of barracks. Faith beyond that. I, it, it's a dream Darkseer game for reasons expressed, but he's also has the luxury of being able to be completely ignored. You know, EG, they have to go for the Lena. They have to think about Ame. So he's just getting loose. He's just chilling. Look at him all the way over in the corner, hanging out. I'm going to surge myself. He pre clicks wall, hangs out, vacuum on three. He gets all the necessary cores. And now you have a level 18 DK illusion and an RTZ. It's just reincarnate, reincarnate. He's dead. Every single time he's popping the BKB, he's like, ah, it'll be okay. And then the pure damage of this axe. Yep. Love this too. The Lincolns on nothing to say. Because he recognizes as long as I don't get stunned by DK, I'm yeah. gonna get BKB off and we're gonna win the fight. I know, that's a great point. Okay. So second lane. Damn. Evil geniuses now left. With one more team fight in this series. They lose here against LGD. Their chance of being upper bracket slim to none. Yeah, especially after the performance from Nigma so far today, we put them in a scenario where they have to get at least one, probably two, from their series later today. Some being thrown out, man, to dodge pretty easily. And meanwhile, nothing to say, just popping his BKB and uh, using that. Burnout, Ice Ice Ice, RTZ reincarnation. Goes down, comes back up, and Ame is there for the secondary kill. This is just a monstrous shellac in here. Wow. They got one fight stuff. One fight, you got nothing out of it. PSG